Guys, we are back. We are back after the international break. Um, of course, we had a couple of results uh, over the international break. So we are back to the Premier League and we are headed to game week five. Of course, we are the gatekeepers. So you can find us on all the other podcast platforms. So we are back to the Premier League. It's um, uh, game week five. Of course, you can check our previous uh, videos. We have the from game week one to game week four. So we are now headed to game week five of the season. And uh, the, it, the, the matches will start at 16th of September. That is uh, on Saturday. And uh, early kickoff, Wolves will be at Molyneux welcoming Liverpool. Uh, guys, uh, Wolves facing Liverpool uh, last season when the two teams match, Liverpool managed to win. Uh, against Hood. So it's not always an easy game. I know it's going to be a difficult game. Uh, before we broke for the international break, uh, Liverpool actually won their match uh, with Salah being on the score sheet. They won that match by three goals. On the other hand, Wolves lost to Crystal Palace by three goals to two. So right now I feel like Wolves have a chance to redeem themselves. But the question is, can they outdo Jurgen Klopp's boys? My answer is actually no. So in this game, I feel like even though it's going to be an early kickoff and a scary game, I feel like Liverpool will still get the bragging right. So Liverpool to continue their win by two goals to nil. Well, since it will be an early kickoff, I can see, I can see a, a bit of a hard game for Liverpool. So I'm going with one one, one one, of course. But in case of a surprise, Wolves might win. But just in case, so Fulham will be playing against Luton. Both Ful Fulham lost to Man City by five goals to one. Luton lost. Actually, they have not won. So this one now, since um, Fulham will be at home, I'm going with Fulham to at least get their first win. Luton down, hard luck, but this is the Premier League. So Fulham to win this game by at least three, three two. Andres Pereira to be on the score sheet in this match. So Fulham being at home at Craven Cottage, guys. Give it up to Fulham. Fulham to win this game by three goals to one. Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. Aston Villa will be at home. Aston Villa, Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. Uh, last season, how these two teams fared. Any team who played at home won their game. So, this time round, who's at home? Aston Villa. Aston Villa being at home and the way they have not been performing well, I feel like it's going to be a hard task for them as they are going to face Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace are coming into this game being motivated and uh, they have started the league well. Fair enough to say Eduardo is actually bugging in goals. Eze is back where he left. So I feel like this is going to be a good game for, uh, to, for all everyone to watch. So this is a match whereby I'm actually looking for a 2-2 draw. Well, I'll go with Aston. No, 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 no. I'll go with Crystal Palace. Uh, of course, Crystal Palace, these people, they have just awoken. It's like we're waking up from the dead. So Crystal Palace will win this game regardless of them being away. So I'm going with Palace to win this game by at least 4-3. Mm. Well, that's a big goal margin, but it's Definitely. possible. Yeah, of course, no clean sheet, many goals. So Manchester United at Old Trafford against Brighton. This match played at exactly... 17.00 East African time. Uh, Manchester United against Brighton. If we are to go with last season's record, uh, Manchester United managed to lose both home and away to Brighton. And uh, in both those games, McAllister, or should I say Pascal Grob, Pascal Grob scored a brace in one of the matches. And uh, it was a good one for Brighton. So uh, Brighton are coming into this game. Actually, having won in match week four against Newcastle by three goals to one, uh, with a guy called Ferguson being one of the tormentors, young boy to score a hat trick in Premier League currently. Mm -hmm. So, big up to Brighton. So, as they're going to face Manchester United, Manchester United will be coming into this match uh, having organized themselves because they actually lost to Arsenal by the same margin, three goals to one. So, it's a result which actually. Uh, took them by a lot of pain. So right now, they need to make a comeback. And what favors them in this fixture right now is the home advantage. But clearly, as I've told you, Brighton doesn't seem to be bothered where, whether you are home or away. So it's all about how prepared you are to face Brighton. So uh, we saw in the match against Arsenal, Manchester United introduced their new boy, Hodgland. 
uh, and uh, he, the few minutes that he played, we could see uh, a promising young man who was energetic and could make a lot of runs and disturb the defender. So hopefully that uh, he's going to make a full start in this match against uh, Brighton, and uh, we are bracing up for a very entertaining and a brilliant match. So for me, if you ask me about this match, I feel like the brilliance of Brighton cannot be actually swiped off. They are still going to be brilliant in terms of how they play. They are going to possess the game. And if Manchester United doesn't work on their defense very well, these guys are going to pounce. So having said that, guys, uh, I'm going with a 2-2 draw this time round. Well, under the Mr. Eric Ten Hag, United have won all the home games with over 30, 30 wins at home. So with this one, regardless of the, the all, team... All the home games... But Brighton pinched it. Actually, yeah. Okay, almost all of <laughs> Last season, of course, Brighton, they were the only team that beat us at Old Trafford last season. So, um, with this guy, they have United have over, over 30. Now, that's true. That's a record, actually. Over 30 um, home games, winning streak. And uh, regardless of the team they're playing with, uh, regardless of how hard or how weak they are, they've managed at least to come up with a win, not even a draw. A win. So because of that advantage and considering the fact that Brighton were the only team that beat them at Old Trafford last season, I see this one as going to be one of the toughest match. So like he said, 2-2, two -two, I'm going with a 2-2 two -two draw. Maybe United might win, but 2-2 two -two draw for now. So Spurs against Sheffield. Spurs won by five goals. Now, uh, having won by five goals, um, Son scored a hat-trick. Spurs now will be at home facing Sheffield United. Now with this one, let me just be fair and precise. Spurs are going to win. Right now they are on a very, very good streak. So I'm giving Spurs heads up 3-0. Sheffield drew against Everton. So they're coming to face a red-hot Everton, a team that, uh, a red-hot Tottenham Hotspur, mm -hmm. a team that has not lost so far after four match weeks. So um, as they are facing each other in this match, uh, I feel like uh, Tottenham will still pick it up from where they left. Tottenham are, are very impressive. Uh, Son started by scoring a hat-trick. Let's hope that he's going to take his goal tally moving forward. Uh, there's something you're doubting. Are you doubting that Tottenham are, have not lost any match? Definitely. Tottenham <laughs> have not lost any match, bro. So Tottenham, West Ham, Man City, uh -huh. and uh, one more team, Arsenal. Those four teams have not lost any game up to now. Definitely. So the question is, who amongst them will be the first to lose the match? So in this match, guys, uh, without a doubt, I'm going with Tottenham Hotspurs to be able to win it by three goals to nil. Okay, speaking of teams that have not lost, West Ham will be at home playing, welcoming Man City. And speaking of Man City, Mr. Pep Guardiola is back in training after being away for a couple of uh, what? Two, 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 two games, right? Uh, because of a back surgery. Yeah. So he's back. Of course, this guy, his presence, of course, it's. It, it's shaken so, uh, the other managers because you know him very well. So Man City will be away at West Ham. A team, both teams actually have not lost any game since the start of the Premier League. So this one for me, it's going to be another tough, tough one. Considering the fact that uh, James ward Pros was an instant signing. And of course with an impact. This one I see a draw. A 2-2 two -two draw. Yeah, definitely just a 2-2 two -two draw. Uh, if we are to bank with last season's uh, results, how the match went, in last season's result against West Ham with Man City, in both legs, Haaland managed to score in both legs. In fact, the total goals which he scored in both legs, he scored three goals in both legs, and uh, Man City ended up being victorious, grabbing all the six points. So right now, uh, in this season, both teams have told you they have not lost any match. They, are, they seem to be finding ways to win and actually managing not to, to lose. So having said that, I feel like Haaland is on the spree of scoring. Remember, he once again scored in the international break. This young man can't stop uh, scoring. 
also he is in contention of winning the golden uh, the ballon d'or uh, which is highly cont hotly contested the front runners of course it's him messi and mbappe so all the best to whoever will be able to to win in that but as they face west ham congratulations to west ham so far they have been they are impressive they have actually surprised me as opposed to how they were playing last season this season they have come back jared bowen is doing impressive things thomas suset doing his work zuma seems to be bossing the defense and of course their new signing as Pogba just told you mr 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 what mr goffer uh jada critic uh, master one cross is doing whatever he's doing mm -hmm. so this is a scary game by the way for man city so they just need not to approach it blindly considering how we saw them play against sheffield united how sheffield gave them problems at a tough time so if if west ham can actually learn from what sheffield did they can actually tap into some results but having said that i feel like pep is back and he must be repaid for being away so give uh city a chance to win by 3-1 another beautiful game uh newcastle will be of course all the games are beautiful but uh, you know there are some games okay newcastle will be at home against uh brentford uh brentford right now okay brentford are just brentford either way uh, they drew 2-2 two -two. uh now they're coming to meet western uh new uh, they're coming to meet newcastle newcastle they have not started very well let's just be fair and if they don't sit very well these people will pounce on them so i'm going with brentford to win this game funny enough okay it's not funny this is the premier league so brentford i'm giving you a 2-1 in favor of you against newcastle who will be at home st james park right st james park yes <coughs> uh this time round i feel like revenge season is here i don't know whether revenge will be achieved or not where will it be the match it will be at st james park yes um last season newcastle single-handedly managed to get <laughs> More than seven goals mm. from Brentford. Mm. They in the first leg they won by a whooping five goals to one, if I remember well. Then in the second leg I think it was three goals or something. So uh, Newcastle loves winning against Brentford, but the question now is, can Brentford capitalize on the bad form of Newcastle and be able to run away with a victory? Currently, we some Buemo they have stepped up for Brentford and they actually bugging in goals. In fact, Mbwemo is uh, top two in terms of top scorers in the Premier League this season. So I think he has four goals. So big up to that. So this is a match whereby, guys, it's going to be also another uh, groundbreaking game. You need to book a ticket and watch it because you're going to be entertained by the type of plays which these two teams are going to exercise. What I can assure you guys, clean sheet, is not available this much. In fact, this weekend. <laughs> Goals are going to be pouring here, trust you me. So I feel like this game will be decided in the last minute. Somebody will sleep and in the last minute a winning goal will be scored. So for the worst season of Newcastle, I feel like they are at home and they will be utilizing their home advantage. So give it up to Newcastle to win it. 3-1. Even though they are poor. No, 3-2. Three, two. Three, of course they are poor, but for some reasons they should be waking up considering that this is a wake up call mm -hmm. or a warm up towards their first Champions League game mm -hmm. in a long time uh -huh. which is coming in next week from 20th speaking of a wake up call there's a team which needs a wake up call so Bournemouth will be at home welcoming Chelsea Chelsea needs a wake up call <laughs> so Bournemouth at home uh, Bournemouth at home. Last season, Chelsea managed to grab uh, a win both home and away to Bournemouth, though it was a very competitive match as always. We all know what Dominic Solanke can do uh, together with uh, Tavares. So this is not a game in which Chelsea needs to go there and just play well and uh, waste a lot of chances because this is a game whereby you snooze, you lose. So uh, I feel like uh, Chelsea also are coming into this match uh, psyched up ready to correct the mistakes which they did against Nottingham Forest which made Elanga to be able to score that solitary goal mm -hmm. and dropping the three points. Also Mr. Nicholas Jackson needs to be lethal and needs to be sharp. He needs to be sharp at the front because he also lost a chance which was to be converted on a normal day. So that's just a call to Chelsea that they need to wake up and they need to be as sharp as possible if they really want to grab results from Bonamoth. Bonamoth, uh, before the break, they actually drew. So they're coming to this match knowing that 
they can play well and they can get results. So this is a match whereby, for some reasons, I feel that uh, Chelsea should be able to wake up in this match. Though it's not going to be an easy game. So I feel like Chelsea will be scoring more goals. So this is a 4-1 win for Chelsea. Well, to be fair enough, although, yeah, I feel like they might, but they have not been pressing me so far. That's just the reality. They're, 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 they can be hurt very easily. Especially when they're not expecting. Now, playing against teams like Bournemouth, these are teams with quick players. Um, of course, quick players, players we all know little about. So, with players like that, you can be able to hurt big teams like this. So, this one, uh, I can see people like, uh, players like uh, Billing, Billing on the score sheet. So, this one, allow me, I'll go with the home team with a 2-1 win for the home team. So, Bournemouth 2 Chelsea won. Everton against Arsenal. Arsenal having won against Manchester United. Uh, and let's, let's just be fair. Arsenal, they have not started the league also very well. Is that true? According to how they were last season. If if not starting the league very well is just dropping one point, then okay. Okay, let's say they have not been playing so well. Uh, yes, they have not been playing. I've been okay. Following AFTV if, and all if, our partners. If, if playing very well is what you consider a team like Chelsea will play very well and get no results, Definitely. then I would rather stick with Arsenal playing badly and getting results. Well, comparing <laughs> to how comparing to how they were last season, mm -hmm. people say that if you continue playing like this, we want we we, we are not going anywhere this I, season. Last season, if you compare last season and this season, after four match weeks last season, mm -hmm. Arsenal had drilled two games. Ah. This time round, after four match weeks, they have drilled one game. So do the maths. But it's up to you. As it's fans, there's something we, have, we can agree on this one. Trust me, Arsenal fans, there's something we can agree on this one. You guys are not playing really well. I can see you are frustrated with the signings, with the players like Kai Havertz, he's wasting chances, doing this. You know what I'm talking about. You understand me better. So, so would you rather be frustrated by a player and win, or would you rather be frustrated by a player and lose? Okay, winning is good. Winning is good, but Arsenal fans, <laughs> AFTV, all right. So uh, Arsenal will be away at, of course, at Everton. Arsenal is just Arsenal. Although the win against Manchester United, I, I feel like it, uh, it has, uh, of course, encouraged the players. And uh, of course, they are now away. It's a new season. Of course, we can do this. So this one, I'm straight. I'm going with Arsenal to win this game. There might be a clean sheet, but I'm going with 3-1 favor of Arsenal. We, we all remember, guys, last season where the rain started beating Arsenal after a long postponement of this match against Everton. Finally, when the match was scheduled to be played, Everton played against Arsenal, and we all remember the results in the first leg. Everton got the better the better of Arsenal. Everton, in fact, won that game by one goal to nil. But in the second leg, Arsenal came for revenge. They were paying for the blood of Everton, the Toffees, and, and the true to it. They managed to get their sweet revenge by winning by four goals to nil. So, uh, bring it ahead right now, whereby they are seeing their closest competitor, Man City, having lost none of their matches. And yet, them, they are, they are faced with the challenge of winning all their matches moving forward if they really want to keep up with the citizens. Then, I feel like uh, this is the right time for Arsenal to once again break the trophies. And if they can, eat the toughest because uh, it's their time to continue shining. True to it, now on a more, se on more serious matter, I will agree with Pogba in terms of, if you look at uh, standard-wise, Arsenal are not yet at par as they were last season, that's correct. Um, but this is a team which is starting to play like Man City. We all remember last season, Man City were not their best as opposed to the previous season. In fact, the previous sure. season which they lost in the Champions League is the season which they all of us can agree super they hot. were super hot. But the season which they were moderate is the season which they managed to win a, tre a treble. So sometimes I feel like it. all these things narrows down to bagging results. You just do what you have to do, get results, and win whatever you have to do. Sometimes playing well, we've seen evidence of many teams. You can play well, be glorified of playing well, but at the end of the day, people will still be asking for the results. I understand. So, by the way, on, on, <laughs> on other news, I understand lost a friendly match to South Sudan by one goal to nil. That's the sad news now. So, too bad. Too bad.
but it is what it is. So uh, on to my straight up prediction on this, I feel like Arsenal are going to win this game by four goals. No, it's going to be a five goal thriller uh-huh. because Gabriel Gizas is officially back. Well, and to five the nil. Five nil. Mm. To the last game of uh, game week five. Nottingham Forest will be welcoming Burnley now. Nottingham will be at home. These people, they have done some amazing signings. Players like Arnold Origi, of course, Elanga, uh, Taiwo being Taiwo. So this one, Nottingham Forest, I'm giving you all heads up. Nottingham Forest will win. They'll beat Burnley. Three goals to one. Please, Nottingham, just ban this Burnley, guys, because Burnley have been playing badly. Of Very badly. And if they want to be relegated, they should continue playing the way they're playing. No b- bad blood, no hate, but I'm loving the way Nottingham are pushing themselves, the way especially they're capitalizing on their counter accounts. Very little. So, with that combination, now if you're going to introduce Origi in the combination, then clearly, uh, if, you, if you include the runs of uh, Taiwa Oni, then you include Elanga. the runs of Elanga, then clearly you know Origi is coming in as a direct substitute for Taiwo Aoni. So mm. can you imagine you remove Taiwo, then you bring in uh, Origi? It's going to be a game, game. This is over. fire. So straight up I'm putting my money where my mouth is, so I'm going with Nottingham Forest to win this game. Give it a 2-1 win. 2-1 win. Yes, and uh, that should be that. So thank you guys for keeping it always the Gatekeepers TV, your number one uh, TV station across all podcast platforms. Remember to subscribe, uh, like, follow us on whichever platform which we are. Otherwise, also in Kenya, we have Kenya Premier League. We are in match week three. Also, there are big games. Maya will be playing uh, Nairobi City Stars. Uh, there are big games ahead, guys. So please make sure also you go and watch our local football because football is our business and that's what we do at it. So until next time, guys, I think Pogba. Adios.